Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the City of Montpelier Development Review Board. Uh, my name is Daniel Richardson. I am the vice chair at the moment, although one of the first orders of business is the election of new chair and vice chair. Uh, I'm going to uh, have the members introduce themselves, just going around from the right corner, stating your name. It's uh, Rob Goodwin. Kevin O'Connell. Deb Markowitz. Meredith Crandall, staff. Kate McCarthy. Tom Kester. Ryan Kane. All right. First order of business is the election of a new chair and vice chair. Um, we have several new members of the board. Uh, under the new procedures, every August in our first meeting, we will elect a new uh, chair and vice chair. And so uh, I will take any nominations that wish to be made for a chair. We can start with chair first. I'd like to nominate Dan Richardson as chair. Second. Okay, nomination by Ryan, second by Kevin. Uh, any other nominations for chair? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor of the election of Dan Richardson as chair, please raise your right hand and say aye. 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 Any opposed? Good. Well, that brings us to the... <laughs> <laughs> Take a breather here. Uh, that brings us to the uh, election of a new vice chair. Uh, I'll take nominations for the vice chair. I would nominate Kate McCarthy. Uh, nomination for Kate. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Okay. Kate has been nominated and second. Do I have any other nominations for vice chair? Hearing none, all those in favor of uh, Kate McCarthy as vice chair, please raise your right hand. Yes, any opposed? We have a new vice chair. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you all. And uh, so let's start, and I'll have some comments from the chair addressing our new members in a moment. Uh, the first item of uh, business is approval of the agenda. And this is the way we start out every meeting under the new rules for public meetings. Uh, the first item of business is to either approve the agenda as printed or to add additional business if such is warranted. So I will take a motion to either amend the agenda or to accept it as printed. Mr. Chair, I move that we accept the agenda as printed. Okay, motion to accept the agenda as printed. So I'll second it. No, second by Deb. And all those in favor, please raise your right hand. We have an agenda. Moving right along. So, comments from the chair. I want to welcome all the new members to the board. Rob, Deb, Tom. Brian to full status as a board member. Thank you all for uh, agreeing to join the board. Uh, we really look forward to working with you. And uh, I do want to make a note that um, we have several members that um, were not reappointed, uh, Phil Zallinger, Roger Krantz, and Jack Lindley. Uh, and I'd officially like to recognize their service to the board. Uh, I think together, collectively, they represent close to 100 years of zoning experience <laughs> for the board. And, and that is no exaggeration. Um, I think Roger was an original DRB member. Certainly, Phil and Jack date back to uh, early days in zoning in Montpelier. So I want to thank them very much for their service, and uh, I anticipate that we will have further recognition for them uh, in a more formal way. That's all the comments from the chair. And we have one piece of business, which we I've done the math. We have to approve the minutes of July 16th, and we have just enough people to do so. Myself, Kevin, Kate, and Ryan were all present. Um, do I have a motion to approve the July 16th, 2018 minutes? I'll move that we approve the minutes as drafted. Okay, motion by Ryan. Second. Second. Second by Kevin. All those eligible to vote uh, and in favor of adopting the motion for the minutes of July 16th, please raise your right hand. The minutes have been adopted. Okay, the first item of business is 27 School Street. This is uh, Key Turner Properties, LLC. The representatives would come forward to the table. So under our procedure, I'm going to have you both sworn in uh, under oath to give testimony as to the uh, minor site plan review and conditional use design review and demolition of a contrib contrib contributing structure review that we're going to undertake tonight. Um, and then I'll have Meredith introduce where we are at to in orient the board. So if you raise your right hand, you solemnly swear or affirm that the evidence that you're about to give for the matter under consideration shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury. I do. I do. All right. Meredith, if you want to give us an overview. 
Um, so a brief overview here um, is just procedurally, I think is what you're looking for at this point, Dan. Yes. Um, is that we have an application. It was brought up at the last meeting, continued because we just didn't have time for it. Um, and at this point with the number of new members we have, because it wasn't discussed substantively, everybody who's here can review this and vote on it. Um, we also need to keep in mind as we get testimony and as you look through here that some of the work may have already been done that required ap approval, but you need to review the application on its face and without regard to whether or not any of the work has already been completed or not. Another thing to keep in mind is that this has different parts of this have gone before the design review committee at three different hearings, um, including this evening's hearing. So when we get to the demolition part of the application, I can discuss how design review dealt with that today. Okay. So, uh, Ms. Pierce, if you want to start us off and just give a summary. I know you gave a summary two weeks ago when we were here, but new cast of characters. If you could just uh, give us an overview as to the amendments, because part of this has actually already been approved, and we're looking for the changes to sort of target our questions. Right, okay, so I'm trying to remember what all that is. Um, the rear stairs, maybe? Is that on the? Well, I mean, what? Uh, no, we, we didn't approve anything two weeks ago. What I'm looking for is just sort of the changes that you're seeking now to the no. Didn't they? Haven't they gone before? No, oh, they haven't okay. come before the design review board. That's what I'm saying. They came before the design design review committee. They haven't been here. They haven't been here. Okay. No, they I have apologize. not been at the at the development review board. No. Start from scratch. Okay. <laughs> Take us through what you're looking for. Okay. In this project. Mm -hmm. um, so we propose to move. Um, I say demolish a set of stairs in the rear of the building, so that we can lift the rear of the building which we found had no um, there were rotting sills and no foundation um, and the only way to get to the entire three sides of the foundation was to remove a, um, a set of stairs that were sitting on dirt as as it were so there's that um, then we just proposed to move those stairs that access to their there's a, it's a it's a five unit apartment building so there's um, this rear, rear stairs needed to be moved, well, we proposed to move it to um, the side of the building, um, which was still within the footprint of the original building because there was a falling down roof structure there. Um, then, let's see, um, we would like to paint the building. Is this design <laughs> development doesn't need to know yeah. that. Uh, we would like to add a sixth apartment to an attic space. It's a thousand square feet. Um, and when doing that, we're going to add, we need to add a, a secondary egress for the, um, for the attic space, which we would like to bring a, um, bring a spiral staircase down to land on the proposed new stairway, uh, which Chris Lumber has approved as a, as far as the building and uh, exit for fire code. Um, let's see, a, a deck, we would like to add a deck to this, the roof of the rear part of the building, which is only two stories and the front part is three. That roof would also act as a, uh, a walkway to get to these rear stair, uh, spiral stair, which is a, an exit, fire exit and uh, egress. Um, you all need to hear about, you know, we've totally um, renovated all the electrical systems oh, yeah, we, and all new fire. This is just uh, exterior is all you want to know about. Is all you want to know about exterior? Yeah, it's primarily, well, maybe it would make more sense. To, let's let's take these pieces one at a time. And I think yeah, the, the, the threshold issue is the demolition of the contrib contributing structure review. Um, so. And so can you give us a sense about what was demolished on the building? Okay, so uh, have to. Is that past tense? I believe so. It's been demolished. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Un okay. Unfortunately, I, my bad. I didn't actually realize I needed to get a permit to take something down. Uh, I'll fully admit to that. Um, it was a stairway that even if I, t it, it didn't meet code. It was 
ultra steep, very thin, um, and it was the only access to this rear apartment. Um, it was, I want to say about, yeah, be four, four or five feet from the wall to wall, with the staircase in between, uh, four by four walls. It was built with uh, four by four, um, well, miscellaneous miscellaneous pieces of lumber uh, it was kind of thrown together it was definitely not a not a very well made structure it had homicide on the outside so when I went to buy the building and walked up to view it there was ice completely covering the inside wall and this was their entrance to their apartment so there was no real sheathing on the outside no. it was literally homicide uh, like white unpainted sort of rotting basically paper driveway so uh, and so and there, there was so what came off was just a four foot section that's not historic of the rear of the building. What it got replaced with was a pair of pressure treated stairs on the outside that met code that were much wider, that were at the right angle, <coughs> that were safer, that had metal grates. So it was actually attached to the uh, to the building that you No, actually, it wasn't actually attached. It was, I mean, it was. It was tapped on to the building, but it wasn't part of the It was in very original. close proximity. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, it was yeah. siding yeah. from the original building on the inside of the stairway, so it was tapped on with nails. But the, the stairway itself sat outside of the, the building. Well, it was a, the roof yes. line, yeah, but the stairway it did. It actually was exterior to the building because it we was siding on the inside. Then they put up this sheathing wall, and then they would... So I'm it was an enclosed staircase, though. Yeah, it was an enclosed, enclosed yep. staircase. Yeah. And so I'm looking at this, this photo. It's a little bit blurry. Yeah. That was included in a packet yeah. that looks like it's actually taken from State Street, East yeah, State Street. East State mm -hmm. Street, yep. And so it shows the rear of the building. Uh, and is it this facade on the yeah. back? That's where the staircase was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so there was, there was cladding on the outside of the staircase. Mm -hmm. The staircase ran against the actual back of the existing building. Back side of the building, yeah. So, yeah. so really, all you've taken off is the very sort of end of yeah. the building. Yeah. It was about five by, I'd say, 15, five, five feet off the building, about 15 yeah. feet of the back side. And the reason why this came up is that Meredith was asking us about impervious surfaces. I said, actually, we've created more permeable surface because we had taken, then we got, then all this came up, literally, because she asked a question about that. It had never even come up before because it was like one, we, we replaced an exterior staircase for an exterior staircase, but we did it within code and we placed a better staircase than the existing one. There was no like, it was not. Right. Well, I mean, part of our understand and analysis for contributing structure is trying to understand what is the, uh, what was the function of this staircase before? Was this original to the building? Mm -hmm. No. No, because the original building I mean, was the foundation we had to get to the foundation to we had to remove the stairs to get to the foundation because the found that was sitting on dirt it didn't it had no foundation of its own so we had to remove it to get to the original foundation so that way i know it definitely wasn't part of and at one point there was a barn there i was told and that's why there was a piece of pavement that was like eight by ten and that burnt down that's what right. ethel had told me at some point and i think they must have built those stairs after it burnt down and added that second floor apartment probably the lumber that was left over. Sure. Um, so, so can, uh, excuse me, I apologize if it's in here. So you were getting to the foundation as part of this renovation or because mm -hmm. there was deterioration that? It was, yeah, the well, foundation is, and it wasn't actually, it was, it was some stones in the dirt and the actual eight by eight original sill, which is supposed to be in structure was sitting below grade in the dirt on top of the stone and rotting. And we had to replace all of that. Um, there also was nothing carrying between, uh, so there's three different foundations to the building. It's kind of a complicated build. Obviously, over the years, people have been adding on to this house. Um, so structurally, it, didn't, it would have fallen down. It was extremely unsafe. The floors were, um, it was seven inches from one corner to the other over 10 feet. So my, my question is, is, um, was, is the foundation work part of this application? Or was that not, did that not need to be part of that, this application? Mm -hmm. oh. um, I mean, it's, it's part of the project, the project. 
but that was a building. That was I think that would be more of the building permit. Yeah, that's more of yeah. a building code okay. issue. Building so it didn't code. come through here, no. right? And so you had it covered in a different. I had it covered in a building permit. That's why it didn't even cross my mind that I needed to go zoning to get demol demolition to get. That's what I was trying to get. Part of the whole thing because it's a learning experience for me. Yeah. <laughs> Say the least. Meredith, did you say the design review looked at this recently? At the demolition. They, so the design review looked at this demolition a couple hours ago, and they approved it um, and didn't have any comments or recommendations. They didn't have an issue with it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And just so I understand, part of this, this the reason for the demolition was that the staircase itself was unsuitable for continued use? Well, that, that was also part of it, but it had to be removed in order to get to the foundation, which was hidden behind the stairs, because the stairs came out beyond the foundation. So okay. Because they, they, didn't, they weren't part of the structure. It shared its own, well, actually, it was just sitting in the dirt. So in order to jack, because we actually had to jack the building up and dig out all the way around it down five feet to put, it didn't have a foundation except for the stone. So we had to remove the stairs we could have braced part of it, but um, that was an unsafe situation. I wouldn't want my guys underneath any of that. It was falling apart. Um, it cribbed the whole building. The whole building had to be cribbed, lifted up. cribbed on, on that corner and the yeah. corner by the driveway. So it was, it was pretty extensive Ooh. work to save the whole back half of the house, which had been neglected for 30 or 40 years. And the sheathing on those stairs was not really acceptable for anybody to be using them because there was literally ice coating the stairs in the winter. <clears throat> they were just exterior stairs with like a fake enclosure. Okay. So I think. So yes, they did. In, in short, they did have to be removed to, in order to put in a foundation. Yeah. Okay. There was no saving it. Mm -hmm. So I, I have a question for Meredith. Um, it's it's my understanding that in order to uh, approve the demolition, um, we need to have a detailed demolition and site restoration plan. Is that in the packet? I didn't see there it. And this I wonder is sort what your of, advice is. This is sort of, unfortunately, part of what the board is going to need to decide tonight as to whether or not they need that. Um, I know that you're supposed to be reviewing this based on, you know, as if it hadn't happened yet. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, it's sort of like the entire project is the demolition site and remediation plan because everything that they have done within this application as part of, you know, there's not really a remediation going on, they're just building new. They've moved the stairs and they're planning to put a, a patio in that back area mm -hmm. instead of where the stairs are. Okay. And that's why it's, if, if the board decides it really, something else must be provided mm -hmm. for that, then that can be a condition. Okay. Do we have a picture of the actual back of the house as it's been renovated? Did Since you? renovation? Yes. Um, well, I might have one, but I, it would be on a four by six. So it's not this one? That's the side. That's, That's the, the stairs side. that replace the ones that are on the, the gable end is where the stairs were. So the stairs we're seeing is where the de demolished yeah. sure. structure was. That's the uh, the stairs. stairs you're seeing in that picture I just saw, mm -hmm. that is, um, the new stair that replaces the falling down roof, which was also um, within the footprint if you look at the original picture. Is, is there a photo of the uh, pre-demolition well, condition? I only have them in, in, there might be one somewhere. I've looked everywhere, I can't find my own. Kevin, the best thing that we could come up with for pre-demolition condition is the last photo in your application packet. Last photo. <laughs> That's the best thing that we could find. Yeah, so you can almost see it from here. So this is the, this, this four foot structure, which I just wanted to show you in relation to the stairs that you hold up, which would be essentially looking at it, looking at it, because that's the end of the building. That mm -hmm. would be right here. And you're going to walk upstairs from the driveway up into the door, and that's what that is. There was a door on this side of the porch. You went in, and 
and then you were in this tunnel to go upstairs, and that's what came off that okay. four foot piece of roof, that piece of metal, yep. and all that homosote stuff that you're seeing. Yeah, so like thank you. Yeah, that's the best shot. Let me ask this question because I, I think this goes to our analysis. Was there any way to have preserved the stairs and uh, to have done the foundation work that was necessary? I had three, three different guys look at it that they specialize in lifting, jacking buildings, mm -hmm. and they all said that's got to go. Okay. There just wasn't a, and they also, a lot of them are covered under um, different um, work safety, site safety rules than I am because I'm a sole proprietor. These are large companies, and they said that they wouldn't, um, without without ex an extreme cost to save something that wouldn't have met code anyway. Uh, there was no way really to do it, no. and it would have we would have to add another foundation underneath it. Any other questions about the uh, <coughs> demolition of this staircase structure? And that's the only demolition that was done. Is that that's correct? That's it. Okay. Other than gutting the interior of the building. Right, which is an under. <laughs> Sorry. That doesn't I, matter. Let's not open up that. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate Meredith's point that the materials are a site restoration plan by virtue of what you're doing, and um, I don't think that it affects my decision one way or another, whatever, whatever I ultimately decide. But um, having those things kind of with an arrow pointing to them in the future uh, is is a helpful thing. Uh, that the. the just to check the box on our review to make sure that we have the specific thing that is requested, like labeled as a demolition plan or labeled as a, you know. Gotcha. The, m the more information, the better, especially when we're trying to weigh something in this way. So like, like you said, we're, li we're living and learning. So I mean, that would be helpful. Part of the analysis that we have to do on the demolition side is to, you know, determine the historic nature of what's being demolished because not all parts of a historic building are necessarily equal as this indicates you know this was a tacked on piece it's different than this is different than say if you wanted to take the mansard roof off of this um, as well you know there's a question of safety there's a question of economics that the regulation requires us to look into um, and so oftentimes when we're dealing with the demolition it's it's good to know exactly what has been removed what it looks like you know in this case what it looks like now is helpful um, as well as uh, the idea of you know the purpose for this removal and how it meets how it meets the ordinance because Mr. Sorry. Chair I would just add to that it would also be helpful to see a, uh, a plan before demolition I think as the ordinance requires right okay. I, mean, I mean this is and I think we have to take a, a close scrutiny of this only because this is exactly a type of situation that the ordinance is meant to sure. avoid which right. is the post hoc justification for a demolition of a contributing historic structure um, I don't think it is it historic though my understanding it is, is the front of the building is but the rear of the building is not we could go there I mean we don't we don't it was I, built I think in the 70s or 80s those stairs so is that historic I don't know I'm asking you I don't well, that's, I mean, when a building's a contributing structure, it, it falls upon the applicant to prove with some degree of other than I heard that it was built in the 70s to, um, to show that it was, it, it's not a, either not a contributing or not an important contributing factor in this. I mean, in, in some respects, we're looking at the National um, Register of Historic Places that, that makes these, that puts these structures onto this list uh, of contributing st structures. I mean, you know, it'd be one thing if somebody built on an addition in the 90s and you could show that it was built in the 90s, that it was never, you know, part of the original historic structure. I think that's a different thing than, um, you know, suggesting that because it's shoddy or because it's may not be. No, 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 but Kate, Kate told us when we went for historic uh, tax credits, she said the back of the building is not historic. I'm okay. just telling you the information that I have okay. from our applying with Kate at this story. You know, she said the front is, the back isn't. We don't care about the so back is, at all. So this is it's the state. It's only what faces the street, and it's only the part with the mansard roof. Yeah, okay. not me. <laughs> not Different Kate. Different Caitlin, Kate. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. 
she was at the building. She came and visited the site, Caitlin Corkins. 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 So, yeah. so yeah. that's the information we had. Just, you know. I'd recommend to the board that we we move on to the next issue um, and not take a vote on any of these until we've sort of taken a look at the entire mm -hmm. proposal as a whole. Um, so the next piece, and, and Meredith, you can walk us through uh, the conditional use. Uh, I'm sorry, let's do the design review elements. Are, are there any other design review elements other than the um, demolition features? This would be so. because of the changes to the staircase and the proposed deck. Yep. The windows. Um, landscaping, is that included? Yep, so hold on one second. Or the site plan. So there were the changes to the windows. Got to find my right form here. Um, that the design review committee reviewed at their first hearing, and I th thank you. Yeah, um, and they. Do you need me to go through the, all the criteria, Dan? No, just the, they, the decision of the. Yep. So they they approved it. Um, so they reviewed the windows and they reviewed the lighting at that point, as well as painting the building, the addition of the decks and the exterior staircase, um, and they approved everything. Their only comment was that the security lighting, any security lighting or wall fixtures being added or replaced beside doorways um, at the rear of the building. Um, needed to match existing fixtures on the building. And then at this evening's design review meeting, uh, pictures of those fixtures were presented to design review and they were acceptable. Do you have extra copies of those? A few extra to hand around. Um, and then at an intervening design review two weeks ago, wait just a minute. Oh. Great, thank you. We can share if you don't have enough. Sure. Oh. Existing and proposed. Okay. Will it be? Oh, will so it have a similar hanger? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. This is a ceiling light for oh, on okay. the porch, and these are just going to be. You can get these. So okay. So it'll be sconces, and these are ceiling lights. Okay. That's helpful. Thank you. Um, and then two weeks ago. Design review also looked at the landscaping plan and including the back patio area. And they were they had really no comments on that at all. They actually determined that they didn't need to take any action on those items. Okay. Um, and that wasn't, you know, that was landscaping review with regard to design review, not the landscaping criteria within the general zoning regulations. Okay, uh, are there any questions about the design review? Uh, just traditionally that tends to be, we, we defer to the design review committee and their findings unless there's a reason. However, we're not bound by them if there's questions that anyone has as to any of those features. Um, you're welcome to make those. Hearing none, let's move along to the conditional use review portion. Um, Meredith. You want to introduce that? Um, so the conditional use at this point, um, what we're talking about is the change from a five unit dwelling to a six unit dwelling, uh, both of which are conditional uses within this district. Um, and what we're dealing with here is a increased intensity of the use. So we're going to six units. Um, and if you look on page 22 of your staff report, that's where that analysis begins. And you need to, d during my review and your review, uh, we look at the capacity of the various community facilities and utilities for the increased intensity of use, impacts on traffic, um, potential impacts on the character of the neighborhood, um, and making sure that this increased use fits with that neighborhood, which includes various items, including you know, architecture, yards, landscaping, and that would be the major points. Okay. So let's, uh, we have your application for a conditional use review, but Chris and Wynn, if you could uh, walk us through 
uh, what type, this is a one bedroom apartment that you're proposing to add on? What are the other bedrooms in, in the building? Are another uh, one bedroom, and then there are uh, four others, uh, four two bedrooms. Right, right. four two bedrooms. Yeah. Four two bedrooms. Four two bedrooms, there's a one bedroom, and then we'd add a one bedroom. Okay. And uh, the first question is the capacity of the community facilities and utilities. So you have to demonstrate the post development will not cause a disproportionate or unreasonable burden on the city's ability to provide community facilities and utilities, um, including local schools, police, fire protection and ambulance services, street infrastructure and maintenance, park and recreation facilities, um, and water, sewage, disposal and stormwater systems and infrastructure. Let me start with the last one first. Is this on city water and sewer? Yes, it is. Okay, and th will this additional bedroom make any change to that? Um, city uh, utility hookup on it, it, well, it does not. It will actually decrease, I think, because we replaced all the toilets with low flush, True. high efficient toilets that have two buttons. If you want to get specific, one for sure. the liquid waste and one for the solid waste. And every element of the building, we've uh, replaced energy, we've you know, spray foamed the sills and spray foamed the building. Everything's much more efficient now. So in terms of just efficiency and, right. and all new, all new shower fixtures, all new, yeah. every appliance is new. So they're all now required to be low flow. Which before there was lead pipes and everything was uh, yeah. high so flow. Just to answer your question. <laughs> okay. I'm going to guess there'll be a negative impact in terms of yes. water and, and, and Meredith, did they re meet with the technical review committee on this? Um, they, well, DPW reviewed the okay. whole package and so they will need to get if they haven't filed for it already the indirect sewer and water connections um and a state water and wastewater permit okay yeah, that the state permit is being worked on right now and so as a single bedroom house uh i mean sorry single bedroom apartment um your testimony is you don't believe any of the other uh, community facilities would be affected local schools parks it's just one more positively if any by adding another few people to town the tax base and the second issue is on traffic uh, and the applicant has to demonstrate that the volume and timing of traffic generated per proposal will not be substantially greater than what would normally occur at nearby uses that the traffic generated by the proposed development will not unreasonably disproportionate contribute to a reduced level of service for the affected streets and intersections, and that uh, reasonable measures have been taken to minimize or mitigate the account, uh, the amount of uh, vehicular traffic. So if you could just discuss what you think the impacts of the traffic are to this. I think there are none. I mean, we, the, a couple of tenants that have lived there previously have asked to come back, and they didn't really drive anywhere because the place is so close to town. Mm -hmm. So it's really minimal in terms of traffic. We're also putting up some bike secure stations. And so if people want to ride a bike, they could. But typically, people don't even do that. They just go around the corner to town. I mean, you know, we sit between social services, which has some traffic, and between Verizon, which also has traffic. So in terms of our impact on that street, it's minimal to none, I mean, even with this added apartment. You know, I mean, it's because a lot of times people don't even have cars that live there. And your driveway already serves multiple vehicles going in and out it serves because of the five units. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's large enough, if you do the math, we did the measurements, it's large enough to accommodate a new tenant, a new car. Was it 55 by 30 maybe? I don't, I don't remember exactly. But um, within the, the, the codes that are set by t the town for parking, we can put another car in there without doing any work to the current parking so the third item is character of the neighborhood and that just seeks to be compatible with enhance the neighborhood character uh, proposed development must be located designed in accordance with the following architectural compatibility uh, yard lot coverage and landscaping lighting and noise so let's take each one so the architectural compatibility you're not really changing the footprint of the building other than what we talked about with the demolition of the the staircase is that correct that's correct yeah. um and so is this what is this space this is this was unused space within the apartment or is it yeah, a reconfiguration fact, i fell in love with the building in the first place the attic is just incredible yeah 
Right, it's an attic. Yeah, it's an attic, but it's a okay. tall one, and it's just beautiful. I mean, it's a beautiful space. You could see it as a dance studio or something. I mean, it would have been too hard to do a commercial space up there, but it, it was gorgeous, and it is gorgeous. If you could describe for the second element about the yard and lot coverage and landscaping, yeah. just give a brief sort of what is on the ground there now, and what are you proposing? Minimal. There's like one. Uh, there's tree one maybe. large maple tree out front, um, and a Dutchman's pipe growing up the side, which is perennial. Um, there's no, there's no evergreens, and there's a large fence around the back. That the rest of it is just grass and dirt. So, we would augment the building by adding the proper or. I guess it's the new the new rules for um, shrubs. Yeah. Shrubs and yeah. So we would so put some rhododendron shrubs. We'd have some lilac shrubs uh, in the front, and then the back there'll be a patio uh, with a stone wall from the um, slate that we dug up. On yeah, the stones right. that we dug up on the property. It'd just be a lot nicer. And um, will it meet the five feet per shrub? Um, no, we didn't apply to meet that. I'm telling you that now because well, we can a, the shrubs are bigger than five feet. So to have five feet per shrub, you can't really plant. Uh, a we lilac. can we can talk about that when we get to that that particular but one. Anyhow, I but I'm really just letting you know that that seems to do right. But we have to take affirmative testimony on you know what what you're proposing and what yeah. you're what yeah, you're changing. And the, and the patio deck area is that open going to be open to all tenants or is that going to be just yeah okay. no that's yes. open to all tenants absolutely. Okay, and then the light and noise. You, are you adding any additional light? Yes, we're going to add um, two. one light. Uh, will be added upstairs to, uh, to the third proposed apartment. Oh, the, sorry, the sixth proposed apartment on the third floor uh, on the deck, and that would be one of those sconces that I, mm -hmm. I showed there. Um, so that's. That then the deck, where the main entrance to the building on that's on School Street, will re replace a, a, an old. I don't know where they got it. Um, fixture with the ceiling fixture to match the rest of the building. Um, Sorry, the second floor door. There's the second floor door. Well, the second floor door will add a sconce as well. Yeah. Um, and. Um, there's a security um, security light around the back over the patio which is uh, actually was already there we're just moving it around the corner so in terms of ambient lighting you know social services had an incredible light you really don't need our lights honestly <laughs> because that building is a federal building and it has unbelievable lighting and then the parking lot in the back there's a parking lot that we're sort of adjacent to as well mm -hmm. it's a large parking city lot. center yeah. the city center yeah. yeah there's actually quite a bit of ambient light that we don't <laughs> there's really a lot need of ambient light from there too so i just want to be clear on the record that we're not going to affect any of the lighting you, in the area. you won't if become anything, the new beacon downtown no that? you won't become the new beacon downtown no we won't be. no. okay does anyone have any questions about the character of the neighborhood uh i have one question yeah go ahead Rob. so the um patio area in the rear that is a common area yeah. but the deck on the roof that is going to be just for the, the third the just for the, the sixth yeah. apartment it's a small deck it's right 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 Although everybody probably would want to go up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, are you going to take steps to, to prevent people from going yeah, up there? There's a spiral staircase. The spiral, there. okay. I mean, it it would be obvious that it is the other tenant. It's there, yeah. But that's the place for Fourth of July firework right. viewing. Right. And New Year's. I don't and New Year's, well, that, yeah. 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 Okay, let's, uh, let's talk about the performance standards. There's uh, about eight performance standards. Uh, we'll just go through the noise. You're proposing basically one more residential apartment. Yeah. Do you estimate there to be any additional noise created as a result of this uh, that would be appreciable outside the building? I don't believe so. No, and social services has had a huge structure on top that's made unbelievable noise. Oh, that's so loud. And, and, yeah. and, uh, anyway, again, okay. you know, noise difference. I is think that, is that since they completed the renovations? That's been helpful. It's it's a little less, in, but yeah, mm -hmm. it's a big yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm aware of that. <laughs> so did they replace? I'm, I'm sorry. I no, no, go ahead no, for no, a second. But this is interesting. It, but it was really noticeable. Yeah, it was. It was really loud. I think it's. it's it seems. It's loud, when I'm there, it's loud all the time. And I, I'm we're, I have earplugs in. So. 
Okay. Couldn't tell you that. Yeah. But anyhow, this appointment will not affect any no. outside noise. No, it's all I think glare, odor, and vibrations we can tackle as one. Those, because you're not proposing any new um, structure outside of the building, it's it's basically going to have its same uh, impact outside. We're talking about another residential structure, so there's not any new odors created, and there's no vibration. Okay. Electrical or radio interference? I would say no. Okay. It's Excuse me, Dan. Yes. We're bouncing around a little. Could you um, reference the page number? In oh, the sure. It's just on the back of. Okay, the you're looking at the application yes. itself, not the staff report. Okay, um, thank you. Can right. I interject just one second? Yep. So for these performance standards, these are no longer listed individually within the regulations as required things for the board to consider, but they're on here because you may consider performance standards, and so in case something really big were to come up this is a way to elicit that information from the applicants right okay. just making sure everybody was clear on that point that's helpful they're just the normal uh, issues that we often go through and I think yeah. it's they're worth at least listing okay agreed so well though I mean probably not applicable electrical or radio interference um, uh, waste storage where is the trash to be stored and recycling so we were just going to use the Casella um, yeah. large cans. That's what's been there since before. And uh, we proposed, off, we thought about a dumpster, but it, that would be, I think, too high impact. A truck coming in and out of there didn't make a lot of sense. So the way they do it now is they actually pull into, the Casella truck pulls into um, the Verizon parking lot and they just walk over grab them put them in the back of the truck they're on the back side they face the horizon the way they've always been and it's just the way they've always done it okay. well, they've done it since we can will you be increasing the number of cans as a result well, of this recycling? apartment we probably will it just depends on we will measure it and the guy from Cassell is pretty good at letting us know what we need so we trust his there might be two instead of one you know two as needed I would say yeah. um, is the location of those cans indicated on a site plan I, there are a number of different sketches but I, I don't know which one is you're considering the so, site plan uh, so the location would face you know if you're looking at the building on the right side is where we put the meter pack and the propane tank which is on that side buried we buried the propane tank so mm -hmm. it's all propane high efficiency and so it would be on that right side the right side is behind the, by the fence okay or by the fence yeah by the fence so I'm not sure which of these diagrams would be best suited for it, but it would be helpful if a couple of those site, site plan type elements could all be on one, you know, the snow storage and the um, things like having to do with circulation and parking. They're all in different places. It would be really helpful if, if this was updated as before the permit was issued. That's how we have to keep trash cans. I can't really explain it. No, sketch so is good. Yeah. yeah, so that's where, that's yep. where they've always been. Mm -hmm. And so you're you're noting them by the back the proposed back patio area, right? Exactly. To the right, right by these trees, right okay. by these two, two trees, mm -hmm. towards the rear of the lot, the, between the fence and the patio area, behind the two shrubs. Okay. Okay. Um, the remaining two sort of normal performance standards that we've is particulate matter and airborne solids, and flammable, toxic, or hazardous waste and substances and waste. Um, the particulate matter in airborne solids, you're not expecting, you're not putting in any type of HVAC system for this unit? No. Um, or expecting any type of discharge from this unit? Um, yep. The, <clears throat> the only thing that we've done is um, taken, we've put in propane, uh, high efficiency propane boilers, and they, they emit, um, you know, steam and uh, carbon monoxide, but that's pretty, pretty normal for. And, and these are unit based? Correct. Heaters. So there'll be six of them. Okay. These are th are these the standard residential or are they differ? Yes, standard residential. Yep. All right. Any other questions about from the board about uh, the conditional use? So at this point, I think we're down to the last one, which would be the. Are we doing site plan? Minor site plan. Or Minor site plan. Minor site plan. Okay. Um, and I think just for efficiency, I'd like to, unless the board has an objection, uh, J 
just go through some of the points that the staff has raised. Um, Jane, could you point out exactly where we are on the sure. application materials? We'll start on page. Sure. Okay. Uh, we start on the, the district standards, which is on page five of the staff report. So, and a lot of these aren't necessarily um, controversial or uh, raise issues. So it just goes through the various standards that we we're talking about multifamily five plus units, which it already mm -hmm. is, or, um, and the dimensional standards, which are not triggered by um, this project. We're not talking a setback issue. Mm -hmm. um, the use standards we've gone through with the conditional use, and we've discussed the demolition. This is in part why it was helpful to you do this overall uh, at the end. Um, and then uh, wetlands and vernal pools, repairing areas are not triggered. So uh, we do talk about erosion control practices and one of the staff questions that was raised is um, about the construction of the patio and whether erosion control practices are being used in that and would you accept a condition on that. So let me unpack that one at a time. What, how is the patio being constructed? Is it stone or is it? So we're going to use, um, there's, we retrieved a lot of um, stone from the old foundation when we, we actually put in a, a propane tank, buried a propane tank. We're removing one from the side of the building and burying it. And when we did that, we found a lot of old stone. So we're going to use that to build the wall. And then the flat ones, there's a lot of flat flat pieces, those will be used uh, as the patio, which will be on a permeable surface, which was um, a uh, impermeable piece of uh, pavement that was, I guess, a parking space at some point in its life. Um, so we'll be replacing, we're taking the pavement, it's already been removed, um, and then it's just sandy, actually very drainable surface, uh, very drainable area. So I, th I think we'd impact it positively not negatively. Enough. What are, what are the dimensions of the patio? Um, I think proposed. What do we put? Uh, twelve by 20? twenty. It's on there. It should be to, to scale. Twelve by twenty is an approximate. So. 240 square feet or so. Sounds all right. And is this you? Okay. Um, and the area where this patio sits, is it a level area or is it a slope or incline? It's, it's leveled. Yeah, okay. It's a level area. A little uh, higher than the rest of, rest of everything. Where the, it's the height of the foundation, so. So under section section 3008 talks about erosion control and this applies to any land development that disturbs soils which is what you're proposing to do and it says that all projects that will disturb soil um, disturb approximately 600 square feet of so um, so it applies if it if um, the project will disturb I'm sorry let me take a step back you said 240 square feet. Yeah, I don't think it does. We just said that I'm going to do the math right now for it. Well, I think based on we based on the what you had given me for dimensions before, yeah. I think in our emails I came out to uh, 375 square foot patio, and then it's surrounded by a stone wall. And, yeah, there is a typo in here about the 600 square feet of soil being disturbed. but might be 400 or yeah. something with the stone wall, but probably okay. not even that. Because the stone wall is only Either way, it's less than 10,000 square feet. Right. <laughs> um, regulations call for a professionally prepared erosion control plan. Um, mainly so that as you're building this, that there's one, the construction doesn't cause erosion itself. 
and given that you're putting it right next to your new foundation I presume that's something you want to take care of as well uh, and two that once it's built that the erosion as you described Chris would uh, or any water would permeate the surface uh, so one of the conditions that the staff has asked for is that you would essentially prepare an erosion control plan? Um, no. Are you looking no, for No, 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 no. Just, just simply? Just, just, a, just a statement that they're going to follow the general erosion control practices that are in Section 3008 okay. sub D in, because they don't need to have the professionally prepared con erosion control plan. That's only for projects 10, with 10,000 square feet of disturbance or more. Okay. So because so we don't need to require that, the request is that in the the permit, if approved, we just require that they follow the general erosion co control practices in section 3008 okay. sub D. That's all. We accept that condition. Sorry, we were talking. What That's okay. We? Well, uh, Meredith was clarifying that it's actually not required for projects under 10,000 square feet of disturbance. Um, we're just simply asking if you would be amenable to a condition that would require you to follow the erosion control practices under the regulations. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Um, so again, the stormwater management, because they're storm sewers, are there any new s storm sewers being put in to this site? Because you're not changing the driveway. No. no. Um, access and circulation, you're not changing the curb cut or. Um, the, I, I don't know if you want me to just cut to where yeah, the next issue is. Why don't we cut are. to the. So in, in my, our review, the amount of parking, they had sufficient parking spaces, um, and the location of the parking is compliant with Section 3011G. The only real issue we found was that the um, aisle behind the parking area is supposed to be not less than 20 feet wide, but with the space that's available for both the parking and that aisle, which was uh, the evidence said it was 33 feet in depth and the parking spaces themselves need to be 18 feet so that means the aisle behind is only 15 feet wide um, now this is a you know prior nonconformity it's been in use they're not making any changes so really it doesn't need to be updated but it's something to call out for you that it is a nonconformity um, and you know, Department of Public Works didn't feel like it needed to be updated, but if you felt like it should be mm -hmm. for some additional factor, mm -hmm. you could. So it sounds like we are not exacerbating the nonconformity by making that narrower than it already is with the addition of the sixth parking spot. Correct. So it's the function will be quite comparable to what it is today. Exactly. Okay. Is that an accurate statement? That's accurate. Okay. okay. Any other questions on that issue? Uh, then the next issue is about the uh, parking itself. The Director of Public Works indicated a strong preference for a fully detailed and scaled parking site plan, including the property line. And I think this goes to uh, Kate's earlier point about showing where snow removal is, showing where the specific parking spaces for each car are to be, um, at least in the plan that's been given right now while the, I think the math has been done such that we can see that six cars will fit here. We don't have uh, a drawing that shows where they are located um, and the width of the, the actual individual parking spaces. Yeah, and that would be very helpful for me to have all on one piece of paper. It would have been very helpful for reviewing the application to see how it all fits together, including the circulation. But in the future, if we chat again and five or ten or fifteen years um, it, it establishes the record of what we discussed and how how the site is set up and functioning and that that would just be very good you provided written evidence but visual evidence in the form of a site plan for site plan review is useful we did discuss some of it with Meredith and showed where the snow 
I mean, we, we, we have that in the, rec in the record, and then we have, a we have written evidence about the parking spaces, but having it all in one place to show how the whole thing works together is a, oh, a pretty so a one typical one approach. One, one Instead map of five different maps, you want one, one map, map to rule them all um, so that we can see where way. the parking spaces are, where the snow storage is, because part of this is if you come back and want to do something different, yeah. then we have a starting point. Sure. And I think... Mm -hmm. You know, while at least for myself, it um, you know I think you meet this, the the standard. It's going to be important later on down the road, so you don't have to recreate that work and pull in from the disparate elements. Yeah. So when they're all just put together, that's what we call the site plan, and it ends up being very useful. So that'd be great as a I don't know if we do that as a condition or a or uh, you you for you mean before. For the permit is issued to request that at the end. Yeah, you can totally do that as a condition to make sure everything is pulled together on one site plan, um, including the garbage, the landscaping, okay. all of that could be a condition on the permit. I was just peeking through the zoning. I'm not sure that we can request the location of the garbage. I don't know that it fits in. Um, so I won't. It might be under conditional use since you're asking about waste storage. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, Wrong we're section. happy to put it in there. So Thanks. I mean, you did a good, you did a good job here. here. Just <laughs> I'm like well, interested. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I support Kate's recommendation. Uh, I, I, I mean, the hardest part that I'm having with your application is the fact that we're looking all over the place here. It's just kind of like a shuffling a deck of cards and trying okay. to find the, you know. The, I, I, I think you. it's also important, too, because, you know, if you think from a practical point of view, what happens to this application and permit is it goes into a file downstairs in the Zoning and Planning Department, yeah. and you or your successor and title is going to come back again at some point. And having that single map then makes it easy. Sure. Uh, so I think it's, it, it's in everyone's benefit. And then that way we know what, exactly what we're approving no as a, and then make sure that when Meredith issues the permit, that it's consistent with what we approve. So we, I mean, in essence, when we draw that, we give it to Meredith. She makes copies for the board, and then no, it would nope. just go into the file. Just the as file. as long as when you bring it to me, I can judge that it has included all the all disparate the elements, elements and pulled in, and any other conditions that might come out of this meeting, yeah. um, then I will include it in the permit. Gotcha. Got it. So the next, the next issue, and it's really the last big issue, is about the landscaping. Um, and so part of this is the regulation 3203G requires one shrub for every five feet of building perimeter and one tree for every 30 feet of exterior, principal building exterior. So my understanding is that the landscape plan that you're proposing is less than, than that. Um, and you were starting to explain earlier why. We did it the design review. The design review. Design review did it for, uh, for design it. review purposes, but this is different. Correct. And this is what Meredith was alluding to earlier, which yeah. is that we, we need to understand. We have the authority to to lessen some of those requirements, but there has to be a record of why such sure. a thing. So okay. essentially, you're you're saying. One, I think it would be helpful to give us a lands your landscape plan to describe yeah. it. And then to the extent that it deviates from the, the standard that I just articulated, yeah. why? Okay. Go ahead. No, you too. <laughs> um, is it, <clears throat> so I guess if I want, I, it's not a plant every five feet. It's a plant for every five feet of the building. So we could put four four shrubs in one space and that would be considered for 20 feet of building so in doing that we haven't actually figured out exactly where everything would go um, we want to screen um, the Fairpoint communications building from the tenants because it's probably one of the uglier buildings in town um, but have to you know I'm not a professional landscaper I don't know Vermont trees very well at, Meredith gave me a, um, a little cheat sheet to figure that out, but we're still kind of going through all of that. I'd like to meet as much as we can, as close as we can, but um, it's also financially, it's pretty difficult to plant and pay for that amount of shrubbery for this size of a building. 
Um, well, so there was really no landscaping. Really, there was the last no forty right. years between those two. But it doesn't mean that we're not going to have any replanted <coughs> with some lilacs and some shrubs. Um, we drew them out, I think, in, a, in the landscape design. So why don't you all look at that? If you don't like it, you can give us suggestions. We'd be happy to yeah, take them. We'd happy to do whatever. Um, and if you, if there's something. Well, it, I mean, it's not our job to, to to redesign. So then, don't, so um, look at what we have. It's I mean, like it. it's, I think it's a far improvement from what was there. Um, a big improvement, and you have, you know, the the site is between two commercial buildings, and there's a parking lot in the back. Um, we really think we've done a lot to maintain a historic building that was going to fall down. The back half was falling down, and so, so what we're saying is that. You know that landscape plan is one we can afford, and and so it will include lilacs and rhododendron, and and there will be, and it will it will not get to probably one every five feet. So I'm, uh, just so we have numbers to put on this, uh, understanding from the staff report that we're talking about 247 feet of principal building perimeter. Is that accurate? Well, that just doesn't sound like yeah, there's no way because it was, it's the front of the building's probably 30. 30, 30 60, right? Po I suppose it's possible. 60. possible. It sounds small to me, but. Yeah, 247 Mary. seems right. It, 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 Is that what it comes out to? Win. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's. I'm sorry. I, I pulled this number from um, the property card. Um, cool information as well as the scale of the first floor plan right and in measuring exactly yeah, what this is sounds, based sounds on small considering how large the building is but i believe yeah. it yeah based yeah. on the it first is, floor it plan is. that's yeah. in here so that would require on the one shrub for every five feet um and the and the one tree for every 30 feet that would require 50 shrubs and eight trees uh now there's an existing maple tree that's that's not to be disturbed. Is there any? Are there any other shrubs or plantings currently? It, no, the only one is that Dutchman's pipe, and that's that grows up the side. I don't know if that's that, that's and, that, and that's like a, a vining perennial. Yeah. yeah, that goes on a porch. Yes. Yeah, it's a okay. pretty typical Victorian thing. So you're proposing um, uh, what looks like three lilac plantings at the front. Is that just one lilac plant for each of those plantings, or would they be a clump of? Okay. Lilacs. That's what I proposed. Yes, one, one, one for each. Per. Yeah. Okay. So, and then it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fourteen shrubs along the uh, side between Fairpoint and. Yeah. Okay. So, so instead of fifty, you're proposing seventeen shrubs, and instead of eight trees, you're proposing to keep the one large tree. Yeah. Technically, so there are some lilacs that could be within the tree range. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just that is a possibility. Okay. But I wonder if I could add a question. Yeah. So, um, as I understand it, um, this your proposal has been approved by uh, the design review board. Is that right for the landscape? With, within the design review parameters, which don't match, well, match right which is outside of this the, the actual number of shrubs and trees and so I would be interested and that we generally defer to them I understand is what you'd said that often or Dan had yep. the chair had that we often defer to their findings so I'd be interested to know um, what testimony you gave them so how you describe this project to them because that would help inform how sort of this num the the number game we're playing mm -hmm. fits in with how they approach this issue. That's a fair question. I think we're telling them what we just said. I don't think there was. There wasn't. It, it was that you're uh, essentially making better what was pretty sparse. Yes. And then, you know, many of the lilacs will grow much bigger than five feet. Over time. Yeah, I mean, and the rhododendrons, the shrubs on that side would be as well. So, the spacing of those bushes might take up space, and if you try to put some smaller feet. I guess I have a question. Given the existing size of the lot and the building, do you think it's like either practical or reasonable to to plant 50 shrubs and eight trees on 
the lot that you have? That's, that's a very good point. I don't think that in, the only place we could actually put that amount more than what I proposed is in the back lawn. And at that point, I mean, it would be screening to the the fence that's already existing, but I believe that the fence was put in for screening in the first place. I, I don't know if, unless we're going to have a tree lot. It doesn't make a lot of sense. I'd like, to, I'd like to actually pick up on that. Yeah. yeah. The fencing along the perimeter, yeah. so the, the, the back of your lot, there's a fence along it, and it, what type of fence is it? It's a red sort of wire fence. It's a metal fence. It goes up probably six feet, right. eight feet, and it and it's um, and it's not only on the back, but it's on the sides, all the way up to the two buildings. You know, to where Verizon's building starts, to where the back of our building ends, and also. Right? So it's a three-sided okay. fence. So it, I, I, I understand and. Part of what I yeah, think is important. So this is a this is a really helpful, this is a <laughs> this is a um, um, a metal fence, but it it has some privacy features. Is yeah, that? It has oh a, yeah, it's totally. It has the, the the red inserts. It has right. red inserts that so go all that, the way through, so you don't see it. So if you're standing, if I'm standing on the lot behind you, I can't look into your property because of the the fence that's there. And I'm looking at the the map with some of the drawn-in landscaping. And it seems that the fence comes not quite all along, up uh, along, but stops about the back of the building. Stops right at exactly at the. Um, you know, if you could continue the building, it would just come right into it perpendicular. To yeah. It. And then on the side that you share with the so so Social Security office, does the fence go? How far right does the to fence the go? Social Security building and stop. It's actually posted on the Social Security building. Yeah, but okay, that's so about. I think that's probably. 15 or 20 feet from the other, you know, it, it's it's shorter than the fence on the other but side. It, it does screen, it screens it both screens because the building's there. So I think both commercial buildings are screened. Yeah. One of the points is that at least for screening in the back, because, you know, if you look at, and, and this is section 3203 talks about the purpose of these type. Sure. One is to enhance the appearance of the built environment as viewed from the public vantage. Yeah. Another is to create shade along sidewalks and walkways and within parking lots. Third is to provide a landscape buffer between residential and non-residential land uses. And four is screening land uses and development that creates visual clutter and distraction. Um, and in 3203G, and I was reading from 3203A, 3203G talks about site landscaping saying that Landscaping should be used or installed to a provide direction to and enhance building entrances, enhance and shade walkways, provide visual breaks along blank building facades, and intercept and filter stormwater runoff, such as a rain garden. So, your testimony is that at least in the back, the fence means that any shrubbery wouldn't provide any buffer or landscaping because of the fence that's right. there. It's, it would simply be nice to look at for the tenants would be about it, okay. except the tops. And let's look at the, if we look at the front of the, the property, the, the maple, the way you've drawn it, and I think if we can get, do you have a picture of the, there's a picture of the front of the building, that, the Google map picture. There should be some, also when we were looking at the windows. So the blurry one shows it. That's the side. Really if you look in that top down where you can see it as well, mm -hmm. the Google satellite picture shows it. So this one. I don't know if I have the satellite. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So as a satellite photo shows, this tree is basically in the entire front yard. It's a yeah. fully mature maple tree. Yeah. Um, and it almost looks it looks like there's a tree behind it. Is that on your property or is that the no, social that's, security? It's it's right on the line. It's both it's on it's on the property line actually. Okay. So it something potentially that is yours if we want to count that towards us. Could totally potentially you know, um, half of it. Half a tree. We'll give you full credit. Okay, perfect. Um, <laughs> I mean I think that's fair to give you 
because that's functionally. Um, and then, you know, I'm at least noticing that it would be hard, difficult to put in another shade tree hmm. in the front yard. Definitely. And might look awkward too to offset that beautiful big tree with some tree that's off to the side. It would just be unbalanced. But a shrubs, shorter um, evergreen shrubs would definitely augment the building, make it look nicer, and provide screening throughout all seasons. That I fully get. And then along the, um, I don't have the, this would be the western boundary between you and the Social Security yeah. building. Is there a strip of grass between the, or is it, does the driveway come? Yeah, there's a strip of grass. Um, it's, I don't know, five to ten feet wide from the building to the driveway. No, no, but I mean on from the Social Security, from the boundary that you share with the Social Security building oh, to, to, the to your driveway. So going from west to east. It's a small strip. How Boy, it's, it's maybe three feet. It's yeah, minimal. But so, it's it's a, so it's a very minimal strip, and that's... Minimal strip. Okay. That's under your control. Right? Because well, we found the yes. pin, we yeah. Yeah. I I, I mean Essentially I'm, it's under our control. Uh, well no, but I'm i I'm trying to also understand. I mean a three feet small section of grass like that yeah. would suggest that it's difficult to plant a tree yes. in that oh, yeah, area that. under yeah. your control. Um plus I think of plowing driveway. Hit it. So, yeah, so the, the driveway side is pretty much out. Behind the building, we definitely could plant trees. There really is no place on the, um, the, guess, the western side next to Social Security that you could plant a tree without digging up the driveway. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe at the very end of the driveway, but then that may make you know, snow piling difficult or getting to the back. Um, that would be the only place to put one. But it's definitely out of the question to stick something on the driveway. It already doesn't meet yeah. your turnaround or three-point turn standard. Right. Mr. Chair. Yeah. We seem to be grappling around all directions trying to come up with something that meets the criteria for the landscaping aspect of this application. Yep. I wonder if we might want to change direction and look at the materials that are actually here versus what would give us the information we need in a cohesive way that allows us to make determinations that uh, make sense. That, I think that's a point. Well taken. Okay. I would note that one of the proposed conditions in the staff report related to this calls for a, it says an updated site plan, I'd say a site plan, with filing that that incorporates planting locations for the trees and the shrubs as required by section. Those numbers are, are what we are talking about, but as far as the precise location of them, I think this board could consider whether that could be left to closing out the process I, I think that's a, that that's a responsibility of the applicant and we really are stepping outside of our purview when we're trying to fit this in fit this in ourselves right I, no I I'm I think it's about as far as we can yeah I we mean, can go to uh, so I think my sense is what the chair is doing is he's trying to help the applicants um, be clear to us about whether or not it's practical or practicable to meet the requirements of the bylaws in the event that we in our decision making are deciding that we're essentially going to waive them to accommodate what they've proposed. Is that correct? That's a fair assessment. And I, I think we're just trying to understand, you know, part of this is, um, you know, because of the screening, this is a relatively new requirement, and I'll, I'll uh, the numbers, you know, are large, and we haven't had to grapple with this. And I think what we're tr what I'm trying to do is sort of suss out because you may not be prepared uh, to uh, describe some of some of these issues. 
but I think they're relevant to this and as we do this examination um, why we have these plantings or not um, what's missing is a landscape plan no, um, there's, a drawing there. There, there's a drawing I, that's what I'm saying so if you like that plan, there's a landscape drawing there right but I we can't if it is either and I thought what Kevin's saying too you got it if you if you if you want to say we grant that plan and accept it uh, and <clears> then you know if you can fit another tree in somewhere do it or if you want to put some condition on us go ahead but the fact is we came up with what we thought was reasonable it's much better than what was there mm -hmm. and I that's our plan and I think if yep. it's a pretty good one for what we're trying to accomplish the patio will be really beautiful we'll put some shrubs around the patio as well for screen on the right side there's already a fence that you described that really is screening the entire backyard of the property and the sides of the backyard and the rest of it you know we're trying to also take care of our tenants so it's not you know I think in good faith you can see we're going to put some plantings I'll probably have Dee Dee Brush actually do a real landscape plan for this once we actually are going to purchase shrubs but we wanted you to know that that's our best effort right now to say this is where we are and you can put that down I mean we know Dee Dee she works with you know she put the landscape plan together for our house so we'll contact her as well but and we're unlikely to meet the five, you know, I'm just telling you right now, we're unlikely to meet the 49 plants that I think would have been required, but I don't see a purpose in this plot exactly to do that. Okay. Certainly we'll treat the front of the building with a lot of grace and respect and we'll put the proper shrubs in front for sure. And they're on the plant. Not being much of a landscaper or a gardener, yeah, um, that's the only thing I see is really obvious myself is um, the opportunity to bring up your shrub count in the front. Um, in the front. Yeah, um, and so I see there are places where this plan, rather than being accepted as submitted, could be updated um, with, uh, I think there are opportunities to yeah. boost those shrubs. Yeah, we will. A little bit. Um, yeah. So yeah, just want to be clear that uh, we just need to be clear about whether we are approving this plan or, or some modification. So. And preferably whether or not the condition is that they must meet the numbers in here or some reduced amount so that when it comes to me, I know what to do with it, Thank please. Right. Okay. And I think that's what Kevin's point is about, yeah. is that uh, we have a little difficulty, I mean, we're, uh, in figuring out exactly what we're, what we're deciding upon as far as mm -hmm. numbers. I mean, you've proposed 17 shrubs or 14 shrubs, and, and if we count the lilacs as trees, um, you know, four trees, but, you know, well below the threshold, and, and I'm trying to understand part, partially, for the board's sake is how far you know and the reasons why these numbers are are below um, the count yeah. as well then but what you're saying also is that well if we need to add uh, a couple trees or some more shrubs in the front you're not opposed to that um, yeah. I, mean, I think we said four in my mind we were going to do four either for lilacs or for larger shrubs but, in the front. But at the same time, Kevin's point is that, I mean, and it's a, it's a point we've made before with applicants, is that we can't really redesign. And it's, you know, unlike going to court, where the court may just simply decide and you live with the judgment, the idea here is to review the actual application. So. Um, I've also heard the applicant say that he's proposed, they've proposed the two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. 12, 14, bushes, three lilacs, and the existing maple tree. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, given the size of the building and the size of the lot and the size of space for plantings and the existing screening from the existing fence and the fact that this is minor site plan approval for some exterior changes, a reduction in the impervious surfaces and the addition of a, a one unit of dwelling in currently unused space that this would satisfy me as far as the purposes of the uh, landscaping requirements of the zoning regulations. Okay. So what's the pleasure of the board? Um, at this point, I think that's the sole issue that remains. Uh, do we want to make a motion or do we want to take this under advisement uh, into deliberative session? I would, I would propose that we take it under, that we take the application under advisement 
Uh, we're dealing with uh, a number of new factors here tonight, mm -hmm. a new board, a new uh, ordinance, and it might just make sense to uh, be able to examine that in a little bit more detail. I would only add to that that uh, I propose that we would take it under advisement and go into delivery of session following the second application. So, mm -hmm. yes. yes. Okay. So we decide tonight. Okay. So I'll, I'll entertain a motion to that effect unless somebody wants to dish it out now. I'll make a motion to go into deliberative session to talk about the application uh, after hearing the next uh, application that's before us. Okay. So a motion to take. Uh, under advisement to deliver of session by, by Deb. Second? Second. Second by Rob. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. We'll take this under deliberative advisement. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Right, Mr. Connor. Next item is one home farm way. So, if you would uh, state your names for the record. Fred Carter, representing the owner. And uh, my name is Jeff Oleski with Wills Consulting Engineers, the civil engineer for the project. Okay, raise your right hands. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the evidence and testimony you're about to give for the matter under consideration shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under pains and penalties of perjury? I do. I do. All right. Uh, Meredith, why don't you set the table with, uh, because this has a couple of tricky procedural points in it. So this is a request to amend a site plan that was approved in 2016. Um, and the request um, first came in to me for administrative approval. Um, however, to do that, it couldn't be a material change, um, and it also had to be a change of less than 100 square feet of the footprint, um, and in the regulation, it just says change. It doesn't say addition. It doesn't say decrease. And so in addition to dealing with the a change of much more than 100 square feet, um, I had also determined that it was a material change because there's a lot of cumulative changes going on here. Um, and so I can't do this amendment to this previously approved site plan. It needs to go to the board. Um, now, because it is a previously approved site plan, even though the procedures we just evaluated this under are the current 2018 rules, when it comes to the actual substantive standards you will be applying, it's the old rules. Um, so they are, have been laid out within the staff report um, when it comes to your review of the dimensional requirements, all of the site plan criteria, it's all of the old rules. So that means certain things, for, for those of you who are the familiar with the new rules, under the new rules you're dealing with coverage of the entire parcel for, um, you, you consider building roofs, but you also consider sidewalks, you consider driveways, you consider parking lots. Under the old rules, all you're concerned with is the building coverage itself, not the entire lot's you know, impermeable surface. So that's just an example of some things that might change up for you here. Um, and then the other procedural thing to remember is that when you're reviewing this requested amendment, you are not looking at the entire site plan. All you are looking at are the specific changes that have been requested. So in the application, you're going to want to look very carefully at the site plan 1.1 versus the sheet number C2.0. On C2.0, 
you're going to see sort of little squiggly bubbles, clouds around the areas that have been changed on the site plan. And there are triangular number codes in the top right hand part of the site plan that pinpoint you as to what those different items are. Mm -hmm. They've also been summarized within the staff report, um, as well as the cover letter that came from Fred that's at the beginning of the whole application package. So, Fred or Jeff, do you want to just walk us through these changes that you're proposing? I'd ask Jeff to please. Yeah, okay. I'd be happy to. And um, I certainly appreciate the fact that there's a few board members here that were not part of this original review. So uh, I thought maybe the easiest thing to do is just give a very quick overview of what the project itself involved and what the, the original approval was. And then, um, as Meredith um, handily pointed out, we've created a proposed site plan that attempts to summarize specifically what the changes are. And, and um, really, the, the overall goal here is to um, try to amend the originally approved site plan with a smaller proposed building footprint. Um, that was the intent of it. Um, a lot of these other changes have just come about um, because we had this opportunity to get a revised site plan here. And there were some existing conditions um, in the field as part of construction that we've since come across uh, that we, we just want, thought could be better handled from a utility connection standpoint, things of that nature. But, um, not to get too far ahead of myself, what I've got here is, is this revised proposed site plan that shows the um, kind of highlighted changes, but it does kind of give a kind of good overview of what the overall project originally was. Um, for those of you familiar with One Home Farmway, it's the old Cabot Creamery building here um, off of Route 2, just over the bridge uh, east of the Rotary. And there's an existing commercial building here, um, kind of a, a curve cut off of Route 2 here with a right away along the front here that goes to another property to the south um, and there's an existing parking lot um, kind of on the back side of this building and what the original approval consisted of was uh, a new commercial building uh, two-phased um, that was going to be attached to an existing garage out back here with some new parking so that the dark shaded areas are new building uh, the lighter shaded area would be any new impervious um, so there's a larger uh, parking lot here and then a um, component of this was this little darker square is a loading dock, and so we'd have a little loading dock access here for truck deliveries. Um, there was obviously new utility connections associated with this new building, some stormwater improvements, landscaping, things of that nature, and I'm happy to go over any of those in specific detail um, if there's a question about it. Um, but really what I'll do right now is just go over the, the specific changes. So, Obviously the first one was shrinking this building size. If you could envision, it's more or less, there was a strip on both the uh, south and east sides here. So this whole building footprint held this corner and it was larger in this direction. Kind of squared off with this edge of pavement and this edge of pavement. The loading dock just kicked out a little further. And so we've just really just shrunk in that whole building footprint and um, everything else kind of grading wise, parking lot wise, more or less stays the same. Um, that's highlighted by, by triangle number one here. We've updated. Um, not only the building size, but the square footages and phases and whatnot. Um, item number two was uh, due to the mechanical requirements associated with the building. Uh, we're now requesting a small generator pad to be located uh, just kind of east on the other side of the loading dock area here um, that was not part of the original uh, design plan. Um, item number three was uh, some minor relocations of the water, sewer, and storm connections. Uh, Previously, we had a new water line that was going to go in along the east side here and uh, tie into the building on, this, on the kind of southeast side. Now we're just requesting it comes in up on the northeast side. Uh, sewer, we had previously designed to connect to a sewer manhole here, um, but unearthing and opening up some of those sewer structures, there was some inaccurate information on, on the existing information associated with those plans and it was too shallow to tie into. So we're now just requesting a new underground line kind of do a, a separate structure. Um, same thing with the drainage. Uh, we're, we're just now looking to tie the roof drain um, into an existing structure different than what was previously proposed. I don't think any of those really substantially change the character. And there's no changes um, in the employee base, the design flows associated with the building. The, the water, sewer, and uh, storm water that you just mentioned, will all, those all be buried underground? Okay, so it's essentially going, instead of going one direction underground, it's going a different direction underground. Yeah, so really no change in all, the sewer still gravity, no real change in the design, and, and they have been 
kind of coordinated and reviewed with the Department of Public Works for what that's worth. Um, number four was just some minor adjustments to some line striping, um, just probably due to the building renovations and, and how we were um, kind of manipulating some of this uh, from a parking space standpoint. Um, this kind of t uh, four and six kind of tying together. Um, previously, there's a parking summary down here in the bottom that shows the required, uh, the previously permitted, and then the currently re request. And there's a small change in that as far as the number of parking spaces um, and their location. But I think they, the, what's currently proposed now certainly does still comply with the parking uh, requirements for the city. Um, and then the last one, five here, was uh, this darker shaded area is one of the, there's two fenced in trash enclosures. Uh, this one here is, is always proposed here and remains. Uh, we just relocated this one. Uh, we thought we found a better place for it, essentially, based on some changes to the layout parking. Uh, so we just shifted that a little on the other side of that parking area. Um, so that's kind of the summary of the changes. Um, obviously, the building shrinking is the main one. And fortunately, again, that this, the reduction of that was more than the percentage allowed for administrative review, which is, I think, the big reason why we're here tonight. Um, but other than that, the overall project, the concept, uh, the use, um, grading, stormwater treatment, all that more or less remains the same as previously. So it's all handed over to the board for questions. Okay. Uh, quick question on the, uh, the change to the uh, trash and recycling. Is that going to be uh, shielded in some way with a fence or is... Okay. It is, yes. Yeah, the, there's a trash enclosure detail within the, the project set that was submitted and that detail stays the same, just the location has been altered. Okay. And is there any um, proposal to put landscaping uh, on the far side of the generator between the, the generator and the boundary? And we know that was a comment um, that Meredith supplied. Currently right now there, there is none. Um, I think what she was referring to is landscaping on this east side of the generator pad. Right now, there's currently not proposed. Does the board have any questions on any of the issues? Yes, Rob, sorry. This would say, is landscaping uh, all around like generator prohibitive to the project? I'm sorry, what's the question? Is, would landscaping be prohibitive? Would that adversely affect your project? No, I don't think it would be adverse. Um, there just may be a little bit of a setback. We want, we don't, obviously, there's some heat and generated with that. We'd probably want a little offset. Um, but certainly, um, if it was a condition of approval to add a, a shrub or two around that, specifically on the east side to screen it, I, I don't think there'd be a problem with that. Is that east or west side, I think? East? Is that, yeah, yeah, it is east. Sorry. East. Got my compass backwards. Um, very ashamed. I, I did get the orienteering merit badge. <laughs> um, in your defense, the north's kind of at an angle, so it's a little, the site's a little awkward. <laughs> there is no defending that, um, but I appreciate the effort. Um, so you wouldn't have an uh, opposing to some, some type of screening. I mean, I, I think we're, the, the staff suggestion is just something to screen it because there is that right of way right next to um, right next to that site at the at the boundary that goes back to the uh, the old that farm the two rivers farm site um, so I'm hearing no objection to that I would be amenable to having a condition uh, to screen uh, with I'd like it to be with either landscaping or fencing just because I'm not sure whether we could do a better job with fencing um, this site sits above that other site a little bit so okay Good. All right. Well, let's just go through quickly. Um, I think the the site plan criteria, um, and I'll just go. This is our the old way we used to do these is just go one by one, um, and I'll just note where there's no changes proposed. The site plan criteria um, include streets, pedestrian access and circulation, vehicular access and circulation. No changes are being proposed. Uh, the parking. It's your, it's your testimony, Jeff, that uh, that you're reducing the handicapped spaces by two. 
but yeah, so there'll be a total of five handicap spaces for the entire site and a total of 99 other spaces or sorry 104 other spaces for a total of 109 correct yeah the, again if, if for the, the bottom left is the two point zero the fire right now would be 102 spaces uh, so the frequency permit was 106 and we're proposing 109 now so we've actually added three more spaces mm -hmm. just based on now that the building shrunk up a little bit we had a little more flexibility there and I think a good chunk of that was the relocation of the dumpster. We were able to get a few more spaces. Okay. No increase in impervious area either, for what that's worth. Was there a reason that you went from four handicap spaces down to two in that kind of mm. adjacent to the existing building? Yeah, I think it was just more of a employee uh, breakdown within the buildings of what's actually required. Um, obviously. Uh, you don't necessarily want to put more handicapped spaces in than you need because often they don't get used anyway, especially for a facility like this potentially. Um, so we were, we were still uh, clear to make sure that we had the handicapped spaces kind of equally separated at all the building entrances, um, but the overall number of parking spaces, this was the minimum that was actually required. So, okay, thank you. So um, I found three. There, there are two. Um, Two there, and I see one by the new new structure. Yeah, one here. Oh, okay, that there's one. Also one here at this entrance, uh, and then there's I have some of the clouding, and then there's another one here. For okay. This so one, two, three. Dude, it's like where's Waldo? I was doing that yeah, earlier. I found him though. I lost the game. Thank you <laughs> for doing that. I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, so the loading and siting of any other questions about parking before we move on to next. Uh, there's also an issue about the loading and siting of parking and loading spaces. Just to be clear, I think for the record, because the building shrunk, so has the, the loading dock has moved a little bit as well. Yeah, it's that shifted to the northwest a little bit, yes. Okay. Eight feet. But there's no change to the loading dock no. itself. Same 18 by 18 foot loading dock. Right. It's because the building it's shrunk, it, it's just it moved. Yep, exactly. And so it's actually moved further away from the property line. That's right. Eight, eight, feet, eight feet further away. Okay. Uh, you're not proposing any landscape and screening, although you did say that you would be a, uh, amenable to some type of screening for the generator, yes. whether it be fencing or, or shrubbery. Yes. Type. And just for the members that weren't involved, Jeff, maybe you could just point out the we've got some substantial yeah, there, I mean, green areas and landscape areas. Yeah, to be clear, all the originally approved landscaping would still go in. So here we have several uh, trees here, <coughs> um, shrubs along kind of the river corridor here. Uh, there's some additional shrubbery in the front, um, so not not to mention the, the existing buildings kind of uh, vegetated around the, the perimeter as well. So right, but that was all that was all previously permitted, correct. and permitted, so correct. you know none of the changes that you're saying, other than you know this generator that staff has raised as a potential issue for screening, are necessarily changing or affecting the prior landscaping That's that right. we'd found. Mr. Chair, if I could just ask yep. at this point, uh, what color do you expect the generator to be? Um, we that would normally be a tenant um, fixture. And so would it be caterpillar yellow? Uh, <laughs> caterpillar does like the yellow, but they, they also make a, a, a white. I'm just raising this so the board can consider that when we start talking about screening. Right. Well, I think we are. Some of the other members, this relates to our project at Stonecutter's Way. Uh, the Vermont State Colleges. Uh, when they moved from Waterbury here, brought their generator and happened to be Caterpillar yellow. So. And the shrubbery was it's, quite it's small. <laughs> and the shrubbery is growing every year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think it gained an inch and a half this year. <laughs> um, okay, so I think we've talked about the landscape and screening. Um, outdoor lighting, no changes proposed. Um, actually, before we go there, there was one staff comment uh, and whether the board wishes to consider for the landscape and screening any other uh, changes, additional screening. F uh, it's just for the it's just for the pad, right? Right. That was okay. just for the generator. Okay. Sorry. We dealt with that already. Yeah, we were dealt. Okay. So the uh, outdoor lighting, none proposed. Signs, none of those proposed. Performance standards, no changes proposed. Site protection and design, no changes proposed. Flood development, floodplain development, um, it's not located within the special flood ha hazard area. 
excavation filling no changes proposed public sites and open spaces no changes proposed water supply and sewage disposal as Jeff as you very explained these are essentially the same just in different locations and this is if I understood your testimony it was because the actual pipes underground are a little different than what were initially your understanding uh, which has never happened on a project before. <laughs> never. Just never. Uh, storm drainage, as we discussed, and it's really just for that one building that we're talking about those changes. That's correct. Okay. Utilities, uh, no utilities, no new utilities are proposed. Um, and you are adding the, the generator um, as a backup to utility electrical services. Um, protection provisions to protect the utilization of renewable energy resources none proposed no this is the comment I was I was thinking of which is the board the staff has suggested the board need we need to de decide if further landscaping or other screening is required for the requested improvements um, but we're only limited to the generator pad we're not well, talking there was a question though about whether the whole site needs um, be, because what we're doing at this point, this is something that had come up. So if if I hadn't reviewed this application to the design to, to the development review board, mm -hmm. the only other option was for me to take this as a new application for a minor site plan amendment. In which case, all the new landscaping requirements would have applied to and under the current regulations for me to do it I would have had to apply it to the entire site based on the way it's currently drafted and that seemed completely unreasonable at this point um, because it also there's no out in here for me as zoning administrator to just consider the changes proposed I would have had to do the entire building perimeter analysis for the entire site that's all the buildings so I think that's where there might be a little confusion here so right now all you need to look at for landscaping is just make sure you're checking as well to make sure that there's no other landscaping that you think needs to be applied based on these changes proposed my review was the only thing that might require new landscaping is the generator pad but I wanted to make sure that you reviewed it as well yourselves right there was one question and it, this came up I, I noticed it in the staff report about the extension and, and completion dates and there was a proposed condition in here that uh, this approval of the amendment would not change the expiration date of the original zoning permit. You've, you've read that and yes. that's all fine? That's acceptable. Yes. Okay, great. I just want to check with that to make sure it doesn't come up in a few months and you realize you're not going to be able to meet those deadlines. Can I just cl clarify though, but no change to the extension. Correct. Correct. No change yep. to the extension. <laughs> so, what's the pleasure of the board? Any further questions, first of all? This is a pretty straightforward application. And I'll say I, I don't favor any additional landscaping changes. I simply wanted to make sure that we raised it um, and the board considered it. You know, one of the one of the issues here is that this is a sort of mid-century um, building and, and landscape design, which isn't intended to have multiple shrubbery that and shrubs and, and trees that we have, you know, in, in other types of design so you know I know that that was something we considered when we initially reviewed this application so at least my sense as one member is that this is you know screening the generator is one thing because I think that is has the potential for both a visual impact as well as you know a noise and anything that can lessen that impact is helpful um, on its impact to the neighbors um, but beyond that, this is a well landscaped and thought out site. Yeah. I, I would agree with that. I would add just a little, a, a slight difference in my motivation during the initial approval is it, it had as much to do with its location, its function as the um, historic nature or when the building was designed. So, yeah. you know, I mean, it has a, the mid century yeah. stuff doesn't get a pass. <laughs> That's what I'm really saying. Okay. It's It'll be historic soon. It will. <laughs> All right. What's the pleasure of the board? Uh, do you want to take this under advisement or is this straightforward enough that we would want to make a motion to approve with conditions as we've discussed um, I'll make a motion to approve the amended site plan at one home farm way as presented in the application dated June 7th 2018 and the supporting materials as discussed during this hearing subject to the following conditions of approval 
that is clear this approval does not result in the issuance of a new permit but merely an amendment to the site plan approved under zoning permit Z 2016-0040 and no change in the ex the extended expiration date shall be implied from this permit or from this uh, approval that all the conditions of the previous development review board approvals for that zoning permit remain in full force and effect and with the additional condition that the uh, newly proposed generator plan be screened uh, from the property line using either shrubs or fences. Okay, motion by Ryan. I'll second. Second by uh, Kevin. I would like to make a uh, friendly uh, amendment to your to your motion, which is that the uh, a screening for the generator be of adequate height and density as to provide. Uh, Real screening. Effective I, screening. Uh, effective screening. Uh, friendly accepted. amendment accepted. <laughs> all right. We have a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. Have your approval. Very good. Thank you all very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. I want to add uh, our appreciation to Meredith uh, and Mike Miller. Um, Jeff and I had a number of meetings with uh, and correspondence, co items of correspondence with both Meredith and Mike. And New into the new new regs, and uh, just wanted to say thanks again. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. job, Meredith and Mike. Thank you all. Thanks a lot. So let's move. Uh, there's just a slight piece of other business. Um, this is the presentation and adoption of the updated rules of procedure that was in your packet. Is and I'll let Meredith correct me. Uh, we were just changing. They were interim rules that we adopted last year. Um, and they were during the uh, awkward phase where we had seven members but only five could vote because of the charter at the time. That's now been fixed, so we're getting rid of the interim rules, uh, interim to the rules, and uh, getting rid of the provisions that talk about having only five voting members because now by charter we have a full seven uh, complement of members. So if there are any questions about this? I just want to be sure that we're, that we're uh, knowing what we're approving. Sure. I have in my packet both what looks like the proposed rules, mm -hmm. and then this is a pre. That's a, a red line That's to a show you the changes that were but made. They are, of the, the, to they the, are the same. That's what the, I want to be yes, the, clear if on. Yes, if you take make all these changes that are shown here, that, this is this. what you get. Okay, thank um, you. Right. And so if we make these current changes, it will work. Um, whether or not we then wanted to make some additional changes to make the flow better is something to consider and maybe it's something to push to the next meeting after everybody has a chance to fully review these particularly the um oh which was it sorry i don't know which section it was um the the process so i if you look at the red line in section uh seven. roman numeral seven on page five Currently, the zoning administrator is supposed to do a statement of the case for every application. Um, and originally, and this is, and that was to include a reading of the full public notice and all reports um, concerning the application or the appeal. I made a change here so that it's just me doing a brief statement of the case because, I mean, no, but we're not going to read everything right. into the into the record. The option is also to just take that statement of the case out because honestly, I think this is the closest I've done this hearing to a statement of the case at any of these. Um, and I don't believe that Sarah or Mike Miller, when they have stood in, remembered ever really doing one. I'm happy to do one. Mm -hmm. It might make things flow better, but it would really be sort of just going over the very beginning part of the staff report right. and saying, these are the sections that, according to the staff report, are the most important for mm -hmm. concentrated discussion. I consider that a statement of the case. Yeah. Right, and I that's like to keep so. It. If you would like to keep that, yeah. then I'm I, very happy to do it. I, find it I think it's yeah. I think it's worthwhile, especially because in that, it's kind of. I mean, I don't know if we call it a, a statement of the case or if that it matters. Um, a lot of times, it's mm -hmm. the doing uh, the summarizing of not only the issues procedural questions mm -hmm. directing the the board in which way to go I think that's that's helpful and Great. I agree with the rest of the board so and just to note uh, these red line changes um, do track to the new yes and they are largely I mean I think the most substantive ones are getting rid of the five voting member 
provisions, it ups our quorum back up to the regular four uh, for for meeting uh, requirements as well as for voting requirements. Um, so it's it's a bit of housekeeping. I think m my suggestion would be that if we want to do anything beyond that, that may make sense to revisit in a couple months once we get used to doing this and once we get a flow. I have a non-substantive change, but one that I th think matters nonetheless. Um, page five, section seven, A3, the applicant yeah, presents his case along with the witness. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to see that as his, hers, there. Wh which, which? Or just there. Um, Cause or his, hers, there. Okay. Yeah, I what think that might be more inclusive. Section um, page five, yep. section seven, conduct of hearing, oh. A3. And I can I can take a quick look through and see if there's anything else like that in here just yeah, to make sure. Yeah, we any gender yeah. pronouns. Yep. No, I think that would be great. I I went through and oh, yeah, took control. care of a couple of yeah. typos, but I didn't do a full. And we've got chairperson. That that's good, but we yeah. can we can do even better with that small change and others like it. So thank you for taking a peek. Yeah. What's the pleasure of the board? Uh, I'd move to adopt the the uh, the rules. Um, with the understanding that there'll be a, a review and a correction of gendered pronouns. Good. Motion by Deb. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Tom. Any further discussion? All those in favor of adopting the new updated rules of procedure as moved, please raise your right hand. Great. That is. So the only other business is uh, our next regularly scheduled meeting is Monday, August 20th, 2018, 7 o'clock, same place. And I think we have two applications? Yes. Okay. Two applications for them. And I'll be gone for that meeting on a family vacation. Okay. So we can, we can notify the alternates, um, and that shouldn't be a problem. Great. Uh, I'll take a motion to adjourn into deliberative session. So moved. Motion Seconded. by Kevin. Second by Tom. Hearing no further discussion. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. We are adjourned. Thank you very much. <laughs>